So if you've been playing Skyblock recently, you know that inflation has gotten really out of hand. In just a month, booster cookies have doubled in price, and prices aren't stopping anytime soon. Thousands of players are getting upset over rising prices, and half the time the topic in Discord servers are about inflation. Almost every YouTuber has made a video about the state of Skyblock's economy. However, in my opinion, their numbers fail to account for many important variables, so I'll be taking a deep dive into the market of Hyperscale Skyblock, even using some calculus to get some more accurate results. By the way, this is by far the most high quality video I have ever made, and I spent quite a bit of time on the editing. So anyways, let's get started. Let's start with how inflation has happened in Hypixel Skyblock. To do this, let's just take a look at Skyblock three years ago. There is a video clip from one of the most famous Skyblock YouTubers of all time, the original Ace. It's scam too. By accident, I bought a Sharpness 4 book for 12 million coins. Definitely not one of my better financial decisions. As you can see, he is very upset and made an entire video over the loss of 12 million coins. While that may seem absolutely absurd, it was the reality back then. 12 million coins was a huge deal and for more than half the player base, it was literally their entire net worth. Now fast forward another year and it's 2021. YouTubers like Aikensoft now have up to 10 billion coins net worth, still dropped by the hundreds of billions of net worth people now possess. When I was playing Skyblock for this duration, my previous hundreds of millions of coins of net worth was actually considered pretty good, as much of the player base were still stuck in the double digit millions. Then one year later, things started developing rapidly. As YouTubers like Swavy shot past hundreds of billions of coins, others followed, and millionaires became billionaires. Insane money making methods like mining contributed to large amounts of money being added to the economy. Billionaire was only an average thing to be now. Then we come to the present, where if you don't have over 1 billion coins already, you are broke. 10 billion coins is only mid, and you have to have at least 30 billion coins to be even considered rich. Even on just a glance, it becomes pretty obvious that inflation is much worse than simply booster cookies tripling in price. So, exactly how bad is it? Well, I'm gonna try to answer that in today's video. To get a perspective on the inflation skyblock, it is important to understand inflation in real life. Most of you probably already know this, but it happens due to two main reasons. The supply of money increases or the supply of necessities decrease. Now we definitely are not losing a supply of items in skyblock, so that means the supply of money is increasing a lot. Therefore, all you would have to do is monitor the price of a single item that has a set real life value and monitor its price change, right? Isn't that what boost up these prices show us? Well, in my opinion, not exactly. You see, in real life, when the supply of money increases, the supply of items does not increase at a constant rate as fast as the supply of money, so every item becomes worth more money. However, when you try to attempt to apply this logic to Skyblock, the reality becomes pretty flawed because in Skyblock the supply of items is increasing at a fast rate too. In fact, possibly even faster than the money supply in the market. So what am I saying? Well, let's take a look at the Hyperion. About two years ago, it was about 1 billion coins for a clean one. But it's about 600 million coins now. Someone could argue that there was a 40% deflation rate according to the prior logic, but that obviously is not true. You see, as time passes, the amount of Hyperions that are introduced to the market increases, and therefore the price of Hyperion is artificially stabilized. How do we tell how many Hyperions are in the market? Since Necron handles craft into Hyperions, let's use that instead to get a more accurate estimate. To do this, you take the integral of the function for the total amount of Necron handles to get the neck change. Basically, the integral just tells you how many Necron handles were sold over a period of time. Here's a volume of Necron handles sold graph. If you see the unusual spike in Necron handles, that is actually due to a duplication bug. So in order for accurate results, we will be removing that from the equation. The Necron handle was first introduced in 2020. So let's see approximately how many Necron handles were in the market by the first year of its release, all the way to November 2021, which was one and a half years ago. After analyzing the graph and removing the dupe bugs time period, I get an average of about 16 Necron handles per day. 16 times 365 I means there's about 5,840 Necron handles in the market by the end of the first year. Now let's take a look at the second year. The average is about 20 Necron handles for the second year, but after they decided to add the RNG meter to the game, thanks for that admin, which in my opinion was a horrible update, it shot up to about 50 handles per day for the last 4 months since then. This gives a whooping 15,720 Necron handles sold for a later time period, which accounts to a total of 22,000 Necron handles in the market. Of course, this number is going to have a lot of errors, such as reselling, but it's as close as we can get. 
Okay, so the price in 2021 of a Necron handle was about 666 million coins. That means there were 3.8 trillion coins in Necron handles. Now, there are 22,000 Necron handles, and each one is going for 950 million coins now. That means there are 20.9 trillion coins of Necron handles in the market. Again, this number isn't going to be too accurate due to so many factors, but it's a good estimate. This means that since 2021, there was about a 550% inflation rate. And of course, we can't just look at one item, so I also did some research on other items. Giant Swords have had a 410% inflation rate since November last year, and Spirit Scepters have had about a 820% inflation rate. So in just the last one and a half year, the amount of money in the economy has increased by about a factor of 6 to 7. Now let us use the common boost cookie metric. The last method may be flawed because it fails to account for players quitting and also only measures the amount of items, so therefore also overcounts resales. Many of them would argue that looking at the raw price of booster cookies would tell you how bad inflation is, but the thing about this metric is that it can also be flawed. A single booster cookie is 2.75 US dollars and it goes for 8.5 million coins right now. Since this item has inflated so fast, I'm just going to use the item from 2 months ago. A single booster cookie was 4.7 million coins back then, meaning the buying power per USD of booster cookie has increased by approximately 54%. However, like I said earlier, this number is going to be flawed, even more flawed than the way we calculated the neck on handle prices. One thing that is important is desirability. Motivation behind buying booster cookies is usually due to a lack of sufficient progress in a way to skip the game. However, as admins add updates like the garden update, motivation goes down due to it being a lot easier to earn coins, so less people purchase booster cookies. This lower supply did make cost prices to increase, plus skewing inflation data. It also fails to account for the total amount of players playing the scout block, as more players will cause prices to rise because more players need them. Additionally, booster cookies can really only serve as a final inflation metric calculation tool. Basically, what I mean by final inflation is the buying power of a certain amount of Skyblock coins. The final inflation of Skyblock has actually not changed too much, with items like the Necron handle not being too different from their price now than two years ago. So if we applied final inflation calculation, which the main difference between the inflation I was talking about earlier is the total size of the market, basically, and this is just the price of item, inflation would be close to zero. This is why the booster cookie metric is not a great metric to see how Skyblock has changed. If Necron helmets were going for 10 million coins and only one person had it, obviously the market has inflated a lot if Necron handles were still going for 10 million coins, but 1,000 people have it now. This is all hypothetical though. But anyways, the final inflation would be zero when really more than 10 billion coins have been added to the market. So the final inflation metric sounds fine and all and is what most YouTubers have been using, but it doesn't really work that well in multiplayer games. And I have seen inflation go up by much larger amounts than the final inflation of item. So what is the theme of all of this? Skyblock's inflation is bad. If I did calculations on inflation to, uh, for three to four years ago, to the time of Skyblock's peak, most items would likely be thousands, if not tens of thousands percent inflation. This is another reason why Skyblock is doing so bad. All the millions of people who played Skyblock during this time period will likely not play anymore due to inflation, so Skyblock can only really attract new players. People who played like four years ago who just want to hop on and play again soon realize that their, their amount of coins they grind for hours for is literally nothing compared to what players have now. And you literally could just make that in a few hours. So Skyblock, not really attractive to these players. So next, let's talk about the impacts of inflation. For the Necron handle, it only increased in price by 20%, excuse me, 50%. John Swords by like 20% and Spirit Scepters by like 80%. But that was also because of a buff. These are only fine inflation measures though. Therefore, it's not that much harder to buy items now than it was two years ago or two months ago. Even for an increase by a decent margin, many items actually dropped in price. So it wasn't really that that bad, maybe like 50%, but still, not, not the worst, you know? However, this does cause a problem that is demonstrated by the simple problem, superpowers. Imagine you had superpowers IRL. You are more powerful than anyone. Now, if everyone got superpowers, then effectively your superpowers aren't really anything special, even though they are the same thing as they did before everyone got superpowers. This is what will happen in Skyblock as the market inflates. So if you are a poor player, inflation might actually be good for you because it lessens the inequality, but if you are a rich player, there could be nothing worse. 
And I would say the cutoff is about 50% because that's mathematically the most accurate for this type of scenario. I remember when I could make 50 million coins an hour and had top 1% net worth while everyone else was making 5 million coins an hour. Now I make like 70 million coins an hour, but everyone else can also make like 30 million coins an hour. So inflation was horrible for me. Now that brings us to the final question. What is the state of Skybox economy? Does inflation need to be quenched? And contrary to what you all think, my belief is no. While I personally would like to see inflation stopped, it is the only viable way to keep the game running. Imagine you are a new player. Without enough money getting added to the economy, you would literally have to make money by other people losing money. And your entire net worth is the fact that other player lose it, lost that much money. So while inflation is a horrible thing from many people's perspective, I believe without it, the game simply cannot run. However, the admins definitely need to do something to slow it. If you've been playing Skyblock for more than one year, you know that Skyblock has gotten a lot less popular. The player base has dropped by as much as 80% since its peak, and while inflation was not the main reason, it can become a pretty big reason, like I said earlier. Because now, if you just quit for one month, the insane rates of inflation will just make people quit and not want to play again. This is also due to the fact that inflation is sort of an exponential model. In the old days, it was increasing at a similar rate likely, but the net amount was much smaller than now. In fact, when I just got on for my 30 day break from Skyblock because of exams, I saw someone say how they were going to quit Skyblock and go back to playing Minesweeper because of how their 50 million coin net worth was no longer anything relevant. Pretty much anyone who quits for more than a month will lose all motivation to keep playing because of higher coins are worth basically nothing. And I probably have two if I wasn't a Skyblock YouTuber. And I also make IRL money off of my videos. And inflation IRL is not that bad yet, so let's keep doing it, yeah. <laughs> and basically, figuratively, all of our progress is continuously being reset by the growing inflation and how it keeps increasing. So it's pretty bad for pretty much everybody who's playing Skyblock right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. In case you were interested, overall I would say inflation rates have been about 1000% throughout the last two years, with about a 50% inflation rate throughout the last few days. Please comment down your opinion on the market and would you like to see me do a part 2, where I take an even deeper dive onto what the admin should do about this issue and what should you do to invest in inflation. Anyways, have a good day.